I would like to welcome whether you are in uh, Europe, in Turkey, in Middle East, in Indonesia, or in the Philippines. Uh, good morning, everyone. And very early morning to Dr. Tolga, who woke up very early in the morning just to teach us this very vital information on the wrist ultrasound. And I really appreciate uh, him for being so quick in uh, responding, yes, I'll do it. See, he's always ready. So I think, I think that's the kind of uh, expertise that Dr. Tolga has developed. He doesn't have to think about, he would just say, yes, I will do it. And thank you, Dr. Tolga. And we really appreciate your uh, promptness. And uh, you have always been prepared to meet the war, the war of information. It's, so, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your kind yeah. words. And uh, I don't have any, any um, things to tell about Dr. Tolga, except that he is an expert and he is the best in his uh, profession. So um, as you can see, he's everywhere. He's talking here and there. So that's the kind of, uh, uh, the level of expert is a Dr. Tolga has achieved. So this morning, I, I'm so glad that he agreed to present to us the ultrasound sono anatomy of wrist pain and ultrasound guided interventional procedures. And uh, before we begin, let us just pause for a moment for a short prayer and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for preserving our lives, for giving us the opportunity to learn and to enjoy your blessings every day. We thank you, O oh God, for you have always been patient, understanding, and you have always given as an opportunity to be of help to our patients, especially during these challenging times. Dear God, I would like to pray for Dr. Tolga, especially as he shared to us his expertise on the topic on the wrist ultrasound, that you give him wisdom and understanding that we may be able to learn things that we can use for our patients. Bless each one of us, especially the frontliners, health workers who are struggling to meet the needs of the patient. We ask, Lord, for your forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Dr. Tolga Ergunensh from Turkey, the most handsome speaker we have today. So welcome. It's all yours now. Thank you, Dr. Jacob, for your nice presentation, and thank you for your kind swear. Um, uh, hello again, and welcome to MSK Ultrasound Zoom Conference, the section of the wrist. The next 30 minutes, I will be talking about the wrist joint and uh, how to begin a routine examination with the ultrasonography. Uh, in this presentation, I wanna show you uh, some illustration an ultrasound image of the commonly skin about the wrist uh, structures. Uh, first, uh, I have nothing to disclose or financial uh, interest. Um, I use complete anatomy platform, which uh, copyright by Health Treaty for Medical LTD from Alzheimer. I have an educator license for the presentation. For, uh, these, are, these are my references uh, all uh, about my presentation. Okay, my old slides, that's okay. And uh, all of them finished. So uh, let me share my Complete anatomy platform, please. Okay. 
Uh, for the ultrasonography of the wrist, uh, it would be best to begin by talking about anatomy and the anatomy of the uh, wrist. Uh, let's talk about uh, position uh, while examination. Uh, while examination of the wrist, generally patients are positioned sitting face to face with the sonographer uh, front of the examiner. Uh, with the examination table or the pillow in between. Additionally, in line with the freedom in ultrasound imaging, the wrist and the hand can be scanned in different ways and position. Uh, ultrasound imaging can even be performed uh, inside a water cup if extra gel or gel pad application does not sufficient in case hand of finger deformities. For the ultrasound examination of the wrist, uh, an 8 or 18 megahertz linear transducer needed. If you have a stick transducer, it can be very useful. And the standard ultrasound examination of the wrist begin with an evaluation uh, at the dorsal aspect. You know, uh, there is a dorsal and a volar aspect for the uh, talking about the wrist joint, volar aspect or palmar aspect and dorsal aspect. Let's begin with um, dorsal compartment. At the standard ultrasound examination, I said that the, at the wrist uh, begin elevation of the dorsal aspect and after that followed by palmar one, uh, depending on specific cl clinical presentation, ultrasound image can be obtained in different position at the wrist. Uh, this is a we know there is a six compartment of the dorsal side of the wrist. The first compartment consists two tendons, which are abductor pollicis longus muscle and the extensor pollicis brevis. This is the first compartment. And second compartment consists of two tendons. The this is the extensor carpal radialis longus, and this is the extensor carpal radialis brevis. At the third compartment, there's only one tendon. It's extensor pollicis longus muscle tendon. After that, there is a fourth compartment. You can see one, two, three, four, and five tendons. This is an extensor indices muscle, and these are extensor digitorum muscle. At the fifth compartment, there's one tendon, it's extensor digitum minimi muscle, and the last compartment is the sixth compartment, there is extensor carpi ulnaris muscle. Uh, we need to know this sixth compartment at the dorsal side of the wrist. And there is a volar or palmar compartment. Yes, the most famous anatomic structure is here. This is well known median nerve. You can see clearly. And this is a pisiform bone and a scaphoid bone. Other most important structure is the flexor retinaculum. At this side, you can see the flexor carpal radialis. It's very near to the median nerve. You can find the flexor pollicis longus muscle. Uh, 
these are common flexor, uh, this is a common flexor sheet. You can see clearly, one, two, three, and four tendons is our flexor digitorum profundus muscle tendon, and these are flexor digitorum superficialis muscle tendon. This is a flexor retinaculum. It's very important anatomic structure here. And this is a ulnar artery and the ulnar nerve. Other side, you can see the radial artery. Okay. Let's start with examining uh, the first compartment. When you put your transducer, when you place your transducer on a transverse plane over the dorsal aspect, wrist at the wrist, like this, this is your transducer position. You can see clearly like this. What are we gonna see? When you put your transducer, it's me. It's me. Ultrasound beams are cutting the tissue like this. Like this. And what are we gonna see? Yes, exactly. What are these anatomic? This is your transducer position and what is these structures? Let's get to see them. Yes, this is the first compartment. There is some very important anatomic structures. This is the abductor pollicis longus and this is the extensor pollicis brevis. You can see when you put your transducer here, this is your sonogram. And there is other anatomic structure here. This is a radial artery. This is radial artery. extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus. This is a radius, the X shadow of the radius. And the second compartment When you put your transducer here, like this, what are you gonna say? Your ultrasound beams are cutting the tissue like this, exactly like this. What are we gonna see at the second dorsal compartment? You can see two separate 
Tendon. This is extensor carpi radialis brevis. This. And this is extensor carpi radialis longus. This is the second compartment of the dorsal wrist. This is a radius. You can see radius. Let's go to third, fourth, and fifth dorsal compartment. When you put your transducer like this, your ultrasound beams are cutting the tissue exactly like this. So what are we gonna see? <clears throat> These are our sonograms. This is the radius. This is most other important structure, Lister tubercule. This is a Lister tubercule. This is a radial site. This is a ulnar site. Extensor pollis is longus tendon here. And extensor in this is muscle. You know, exocarpialis. This is extensor in this is muscle. And those are extensor digitorum muscles. Third, fourth, and fifth compartment. Extensor digiti minimi muscle. It's, it's very clear. This is your transducer position. This is your transducer position. Let's go to six dorsal compartment. Six compartment of the dorsal wrist. You need to put your transducer here like this. This is an ulnar site. What does it mean? It means your ultrasound beams are cutting this tissue like this. So what are we gonna see? We can see these anatomic structures. Let's see to them. This is six compartment and sonogram. This is a slave process of the ulna. This is ulna. This is radius. This is sixth compartment, and this is extensor carpi ulnaris muscle. Extensor carpi ulnaris muscle. This is solid process of ulna sonogram. <clears throat> okay, let's go to volar compartment. <clears throat> This is the volar side or palmar side. When you put your transducer 
here like this, your ultrasound beams are cutting the tissue like this. So what we can see, your transducer beams are here, your transducer here, This is volar compartment and sonogram of the volar compartment. Yes, you can see the flexor retinaculum here, um, pisiform bone and the scaphoid bone. This is a median nerve. You can see at sonogram, this is a median nerve. You can see clearly. This is a scaphoid bone. This is a scaphoid bone. This is a pisiformis bone. Pisiformis bone. And there is a retinaculum. This is flexor retinaculum. You can see at the sonogram here. And this muscle is the flexor carpal radialis here. This artery is, you know, ulnar artery. And there is a tiny nerve. You can see clearly ulnar nerve. It's very close to median nerve. This is a flexor pollicis longus muscle here. These are superficial, these are profundus flexor digitorum. These are superficial of the flexor digitorum. This is a common flexor sheet. And these are flexor digitorum superficialis. And these are flexor digitorum profundus. Um, uh, one draw something. This is a sonogram. When you put your transducer here, what are you saying? like this. You need to understand the ultrasound beams are cutting the tissue like a knife. This is the basic principle of the ultrasonography. Okay, this is volar compartment again. This is the first position of your transducer and move to distally. This is the second position of your transducer. What we're gonna see now? At the volar compartment, at the volar side, there is another important structure is the guyon tunnel or guyon channel. This is a piciform bone. This is a piciform bone. We can see ulnar nerve and ulnar artery at the guyon channel or guyon tunnel. This is a artery, this artery ulnar artery and there is a ulnar nerve here and the flexor retinaculum you can see clearly when you move your transducer distally
you can see this sonogram because the radial artery divided to separate branch. This is a superficial, this is a superficial site, the superficial branch. This is a deep branch of the radial artery. You can see the ulnar artery here. This is other bone, hamat bone. This is a Guyan tunnel. Why it's important? Because of sometimes the nerve can be entrapped here. Mm. Let's see some joint at the wrist. When you put your transducer here at the dorsal compartment like this, this is your sonogram. This is radius, radius. This is a ulna, ulnar head, ulnar head. This is a joint. This whole radio ulnar joint is here. This is a distal radio ulnar joint. Uh, there is a fibrous membrane of the distal radio ulnar joint, but you cannot see all the time uh, with ultrasonography. And there is another anatomic structure here. This is a rad radio ulnar ligament. You can see sometimes clearly, but sometimes not. But you have to see the radio ulnar joint here. Is it clear? Okay, we can draw this like this. Like this. You can see. The dorsal side, when you move your transducer here, you can see but it's different than other. And you can see radius, and you can see distal. Distal radio ulnar joint here. <clears throat> and uh, other joint at the dorsal compartment, when you put your transducer like this, your ultrasound beams are cutting the tissue. Sorry.
like this. Add it, please. What are we gonna say? We're gonna say this image. What's this? This is a radical per joint. Let's see. Sonogram. This is your transducer position. It's longitudinally long axis view. This is a radius. The lunat bone and capita. So there is a joint. This is a dorsal radiocarpal. There's another joint here. And there is another joint here. One, two, three. Three separate joints you can see clearly. I want to show it to you other tendon. It's important because uh, for the entrapment or tenosynovitis can be occurred here. When you put your transducer here like this, your ultrasound beams are cutting this tissue Like this. And what are we going to see? Look closer. This is the tendinosity of the flexor pollicis longus muscle. This is a flexor pollicis longus muscle. We can see clearly this muscle and tendon. And this is a superficial head of flexor pollicis brevis. This is a deep head of the flexor pollicis brevis muscle. When you put your transducer here, you can see the axial view of this tendon. Your ultrasound beams are here. Like this. What we're gonna see? This is a sonogram of the flexor pollicis longus, the axial view. Flexor pollicis brevis muscle. This is the adductor pollicis brevis muscle. This is the opponent's pollicis muscle, and this is our tendon, flexor pollicis. Uh, a view up and down. Uh, there is a most important pathology about the wrist. Uh, this is a carpal tunnel syndrome. 
and um, other uh, is intersection syndrome. Do you hear me now? Yes, Dr. Toga, we can hear you. Okay. Yes, Dr. Toga, we can hear you. Is there any problem about my voice? There's no problem. Everything is fine, Dr. Toga. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Let's see the video. This is my patient, uh, which is made in nerve. Uh, and Chapman, you can see the enlarged medial, median nerve. And this is a, a axial view. And when you turn your transducer, you can see the sagittal view. Oh, it's it's very, very nice view. This is an entrapped area and the proximal side of the nerve enlarge. It's a typical for the nerve entrapment syndrome. Can, can you show the video, Dr. Tolga? Uh, you didn't see? Yeah, no. we can only see your face, Dr. Tolga. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm sh sharing again. Okay. Is it okay now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is my patient. Uh, median nerve. It's entrapped area. Axial view to turning the the sagittal view. Sorry. I want to show you again. Okay. Yes, this is a median nerve. Axial view. So turning transducer, you can see the sagittal view. This is entrapped area. You can see? Yes. At the proximal side, this is an enlarged area. It's very typical to entrapment pathologies. And Another patient which same pathology. This is axial view of the um, volar side. This is a median nerve. This is my cannula. Hydrodissection dissection and steroid injection for the carpal tunnel. <clears throat> this is a nice view of the, this is a nice view of the transverse ligament. Sorry for my video. The transverse ligament and median nerve is very close now. So when hydrodissection complete, you can see transverse carpal ligament.
after the treatment, this is before the hydrodissection, and this is the two weeks after the hydrodissection. So let's read here. Sorry for the resolution because of it's my old video. The curve in tendinitis. You can see the hollow sign. Hollow sign. It's very uh, specific to the uh, tenor synovitis. This and this are tendons of the first compartment. And steroid injection. Okay. Okay, there is lots of pathology uh, about the wrist, but we cannot so much time uh, talk about all of this. Uh, maybe um, you can ask or discuss something about the wrist joint. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity. And that's all my uh, presentation. Thank you. Dr. Tolga, you're always great. Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs> Thank you. You're, you're very, very nice. kind. Very nice. So I'm so happy that uh, in spite of a very short notice, you still agreed to uh, talk to us about uh, the wrist. And uh, I, I just would like to know if there are any questions. Dr. Tolga is always uh, very willing to uh, answer your very important question so you answer him now you ask him now while it is still uh, maybe around five o'clock in the morning is it still five o'clock dr tolga in turkey almost almost and the good thing is his wife is still sleeping so you can ask no no she, she's she's listening me now oh yes she's listening okay 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 so just ask anything anyway Dr. Tolga, I have a question. Yes, please. Thank you very much for the very good lecture as usual. Thank you very much because it looked like a cadaver course almost. Thank, Thank you. So Thank Dr. You so Tolga, when you did the hydrodissection of the median nerve, I noticed that you did it on top of the nerve. Uh, do you feel there are there is a need to do it also below the nerve? And if you do it that way, do you do it on top first or below? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, th th that patient uh, have had uh, three times a surgery. Uh, the first surgery um, by orthopedic surgeon and the second as well, and the third is plastic surgeon, but she never um, pain relief and the, the pathology occur and persist uh, and the fourth surgeon don't want to uh, perform a surgery uh, at that time uh, my preference is a hydrodissection with liquid or hydrodissection with air I call that air dissection what doesn't mean air dissection at that uh, at that uh, at this uh, patient I prefer the hydro dissection, but sometimes uh, I prefer air dissection. What does it mean, air dissection? I usually use ozone, ozone dissection. Uh, ozone, you know, is a gas. Uh, when you inject to entrap area, uh, you can separate the layer with air and ozone is a very um, interesting agent uh, it's have analgesic effect and uh, we we don't know why it occur and a little bit neuromodulation effect and uh, there's some paper, uh, good paper, and there's some good clue uh, about 
regeneration. It, it, it could be done the regeneration. So ozone is a good choice for the nerve entrapment as well. Uh, if I would like to perform a hydrodissection, uh, the first I prefer separate the transfer ligament and the nerve, the first upper side. Uh, and the, after that, the, the below of the uh, nerve sometimes, because if he or she had a repetitive surgery. Usually, doctor, do you perform it only once after the, you know, the procedure is usually done once and it has good results? Thank you. He, always, always the, the one procedure, uh, that's enough. Uh, but the patient have had a surgery, sometimes you need a second procedure. And after that, you can perform pulse radiofrequency for the median nerve. It's a good choice for uh, insist, uh, in, in, in persistent carpal tunnel syndrome. Radiofrequency, but pulse radiofrequency after the hydrodissection. Thank you. Dr. Tolga, there's another question from Byron. Byron, please speak up. Byron. Good morning, Dr. Tolga. Um, Good morning. Uh, how Good was morning. Your, as to what, uh, what's your preferred needle gauge in doing your median nerve hydrodissection, also for your decorvein stenocynovitis? And also, what's your preferred injectate? Um, usually 22 gauge needle, uh, but uh, at, at the, this uh, patient, uh, I think it's a 25 uh, gauge needle uh, because of repetitive surgery. And usually I, I am prefer 22 gauge. Um, what I prefer uh, local anesthetic agent, uh, low concentration of the local anesthetic agent and uh, corticosteroid. Uh, I'm not prefer macromolecular corticosteroid or particular corticosteroid. Uh, I would like to prefer um, non-particular corticosteroid uh, such as dex dexamethasone because of uh, uh, more important than steroid hydrodissection i believe that hyd hydrodissection is more important than which steroid do you use i see, I see. You, you, can, you can use ozone as well i see i see thank you dr Tolga. Okay. Any follow-up question? No more? Hello? Is there any question? Is there any other question? So I think that there's none, Dr. Tolga. So again, I would like to really thank you for uh, waking up very early in in the morning, maybe I, I, I would say you wake up at around three or two in the morning. Thank you for your nice break. invitation, Dr. Jacob. Thank you so, for your nice invitation. Thank you so much for always uh, providing us uh, very vital information, especially on the wrist. And looking forward to your other lectures in the future. So again, send my best regards to your wife and of course uh, to the rest of your team. And uh, we'll see you this Sunday. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, Sunday. Uh, yeah. We, we will meet on Sunday and I have a, another lecture uh, on Sunday. We'll see. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much.
And thank you so uh, much. Nice invitation for your nice like invitation. Invite, I would like to invite thank our thank you, Pash. Yeah. I would like to invite our friends to join us this Sunday at 5 Please. p.m. 5 p.m. Uh, uh, Philippine time for the uh, Morocco uh, Academy of Palliative uh, Care and, and Pain. pain. So, yes. So hopefully uh, we will join you this this uh, Sunday. Thank you so much. And uh, see you again, Dr. Tolga. Thank you so much and have a good time. God bless. Take care. God bless everyone. Have a nice day. And uh, enjoy your day. Have a nice day. Yeah, have a thank nice you day. so much again. Yeah, thank you so much again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. God bless.